Uh, hey everybody, we are uh, really just happy to have you here. We're gonna do a quick workshop around uh, what you need to be thinking about before the end of the year. So we're getting ready to close up 2018. You're getting ready to close up your books for the year. Uh, so Jeff and I are here to uh, kind of just give you some pointers if you're using inventory labs and things that you can do uh, to get ready for the upcoming tax season. So Jeff, I'm starting off here on the inventory valuation page. I know you're going to talk a little bit about that and, and you're going to start off with who this really kind of pertains to because this kind of matters more to some folks than others depending on how they file their taxes. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So with the, uh, with the IRS, they have uh, three reporting methods for your taxes and one is cash, one's accrual, and then there's a hybrid. It's a mixture of cash and accrual. So for the cash, as soon as you buy uh, any kind of inventory, anything like that, or if you have expenses, any other expenses, subscriptions, things like of that nature, packing supplies, you expense it all, and that goes against any income for that year, so it deducts immediately from the income. The accrual, you, you're, it's more complicated. It's more of like your typical accounting where you have the debits and credits, and it's a more complicated method. But with inventory, it's, you know, you take your beginning inventory value at the beginning of the year, and then at the end of the year, you take that value. And um, with the uh, hybrid method, it's a mixture of the cash and accrual. So you're still expensing most of the things, all of your income is, is accounted for, but the inventory costs are an accrual method. And so you need that beginning of the year value, and then you need the end of the year value. And so, so it's, this is really going to pertain more to the folks that are filing their taxes using the accrual method or the hybrid method, not so much the cash method. Right, is that right. Right. And I think most of our customers are probably using like a hybrid method of accounting. Uh, some could be using the accrual, but I think most people the hybrid's probably more applicable. So we're starting off kind of talking today about what they need to do before the end of the year, and I know we're starting off here on the inventory valuation page because this is kind of the only time sensitive area that folks want to deal with before the 31st. Is that right? Right. It's not retroactive. So you have to have, for instance, if you wanted your valuation for today's date, you'd have to have had your costs for all of your inventory entered on your inventory page um, by probably yesterday. So for anybody that isn't uh, aware, your inventory valuation report is your inventory's value in by cost, so right. you're on hand. In, <clears throat> excuse me, you're on hand, and your inbound inventory's value uh, in by cost. So that's one of those things that folks really need for December 31st. So Jeff, what you're really wanting folks to do is to get that information, their their by cost or their cost per unit, to get that plugged in before December 31st, because this report is like a snapshot. If Correct. It's not there on December 31st. They can't put those uh, amounts in. You know, sometime in January and go back and look at that snapshot for December 31st because those buy costs aren't going to be there. Right. It just takes a snapshot one time per day. So um, it's usually towards the end of the day, but uh, yeah, just once per day and then that's all you get. So. so they should really probably start on that now. Right. So that they're not, you know, caught like on December 31st like scrambling to get all their buy costs plugged in before the snapshot is taken. Like, don't wait till the last minute. Right. Um, so they don't have to do anything really on this report. I can't click around or make any changes. All the changes are going to happen because I've plugged in my cost per unit amounts in inventory, correct? Right. Yeah, it pulls in all that inform information from the, the inventory page. So go ahead and talk a little bit about the different ways um, we can get our cost per unit amounts plugged into our inventory. So the best way is, you know, when you're listing items into a batch and you add your cost and, you know, purchase date and supplier and that sort of thing as you list, because then we automatically keep track of it, um, even on replenishments. Um, we keep track of each time you send them in. And so that's all tracked automatically if you list. But if you don't, or say you're, you're just coming over to Inventory Lab and it's we've just done a sync on your inventory from Seller Central, you'll have to add those in. So... You can either do it manually, or you can use what we call the import method, and you import your uh, cost as a CSV file or spreadsheet file. Uh, that's and this, 
and manually I could actually even sort because this is my my cost per unit column right here right maybe if I only think I have a few that I would need to enter the cost per unit amounts for I can sort that column to be able to quickly see oh here's one that I need to add right my my cost per unit to yeah. so I can just click that and plug it in yeah, since you only have the one, and it's, it's very simple to just add the cost supplier and purchase date right from there. And then you were talking about uh, importing. So that's also relatively uh, simple. I, I hate to use that term simple because I shouldn't, I should never refer to a spreadsheet as simple because <laughs> yeah. we all know what I can do to a spreadsheet. <laughs> Me too. But thankfully, it is, it, it is, uh, it's not um, as difficult as one might think. So if you do have a lot of uh, cost per unit amounts that you do need to plug in, it is much easier to, from here, whether this is your uh, FBA inventory or your merchant fulfilled inventory, or if you have both, um, but whichever one that you need to kind of get that data plugged in for, go to that inventory page, click export. It's going to export that in a .csv formatted spreadsheet, which of course is the universal format for a spreadsheet, so you can open it in whatever uh, right. spreadsheet software you like or even uh, Google Sheets if you don't have software on your computer and you'll see that column where the cost per unit amounts uh, would be and they can just plug those in right Jeff just save that and import it right back in right and to make it even easier um, you the export or the import process does not work if you have replenishments and so what you can do is like you demonstrated sorting the uh, buy cost you could also click on that replens um, column. So what that means if it has a zero there is you haven't replenished that. It's a single use or single time item or you've sent it in just one time. And so for those items you can update it via the import uh, process. If it has a, a number in that field you actually have to do that manually. So the import won't work for replenishments. So if you sort it like this and then export it, all you have to do, those will be at the top of the file. So you can just uh, add the cost to those uh, items that have zero for the replens value. And then once you hit items that have a, a number in the replens value, you can just ignore those. But at least this way they're sorted all at the top. And then you can import those back in. It's really a simple process. With uh, We make it as easy as possible. Yeah, you're, you don't need to put in any kind of a, a dollar sign. No. Um, I remember at one point, before I knew better, I put... Um, a minus sign, like, well, it's, it's my oh, cost yeah. per unit, so it's <laughs> negative $2. Uh, of course, that was a disaster. <clears throat> so don't put anything in like that. If, if your cost is $2 or $2.15, just put in 2.15. Right. No dollar sign, nothing else, save it, uh, and then import it. That's great information, though, about, um, you know, for items that have multiple buy costs and you know, something that, that's a replenishment, um, that's really good to know. Yeah, those uh, replens are, we call them sort sequences. You can get there by clicking on the M SKU for that item. If so, if you found an item that had, say, one or two replens, for example, you click on the uh, M SKU, it opens up the sub M SKU page, what we're looking at right now, and you can see, you know, sort sequence one, that's the first time you sent those in, and that was the cost. And then sort sequence two is the second time you sent them in. You know, it might be that they're the same cost, but a lot of times they're not, you know, and they're different costs each time, depending on you know, where you buy it, you know, when you buy it, that sort of thing. So for these, you definitely have to go to this sub MSQ page and enter the cost there. Right. So if anybody needs any information about that, um, you would want to take a look at our information about um, sub MSQ, which you kind of, if you're not familiar with that term, we've kind of mentioned it a couple times. It just refers to your sub MSQ is an MSQ that has multiple buy costs or maybe different suppliers or purchase dates, whatever the case may be. Um, but go to resources and check out the Help Center and just search sub M SKU. So then after those amounts are, are plugged in, um, they save that, they come right back into inventory and they click import. Right. They find that saved file, import it right back in again, and everything is then going to be updated. That's gonna update in their inventory evaluation report. Right? Correct. So they don't have to worry about that after that. Right, yeah, a lot of information feeds from this inventory page so having those costs entered are going to affect a lot of things like your sales transactions and some of the other reports that we'll look at. If you get that done this is then going to 
be accounted for in any sales that you've had in the past of that MSKU, as well as sales of the MSKU going forward. Right. So that, of course, is going to update your profit and loss report. Um, all of these these different documents are going to be updated because you've gotten that data plugged in. Yeah, that's right. The inventory page is the best place to do that. So you want to make sure it's updated here because then it saves you work. It Once it's updated here, then there's several reports that pull that information and make it easy to to see you know how much profit you're making on items but that brings up a really really good question so with inventory evaluation like we, we said that that's really the only time sensitive thing that, that folks really want to take a look at now right um, because everything else is you know relatively retroactive you can plug mm -hmm. something in and it's going to you know be accounted for from some time in the past so kind of moving what we were just talking about over to the sales side we know that when folks delete inventory from Seller Central is also deleted from their account in Inventory Lab as well as vice versa. So if they don't have it here in their inventory, it's, but it has been sold, you know, then it's not accounted. If they haven't plugged in that, that buy cost, it's not going to be accounted for in their P&L report. So what are they supposed to do then? Yeah, this is pretty common when we have people that have sold on Amazon for any, uh, any period of time. They'll come over and sync their inventory. But they're there's always items that you're going to archive or delete from your inventory after you sell them. Maybe it's because it was brand, it wasn't brand restricted, but now it is. So you've, you know, deleted those listings from your inventory. So it's not going to show up in your inventory page. So the only place to update it is from your sales page. But there, it's very easy because you can use the same export import process that we do on the inventory page to update those costs. It's just uh, a couple of data points that you have to connect it to such as order ID or MSKU and it's basically the same process you still have that export button there in the upper right corner the key thing here though is you if you'll note you're viewing the last month it'll say in the uh, upper left corner there it tells you what time period you're looking at on the sales page so right below your mouse there it was uh, showing the last month you want to change that uh, search period to make sure it shows all of your uh, transactions. So yeah, click on the blue uh, advanced, then click there and show all as far back as you've uh, synced into Inventory Lab. That's good advice. And they can, you know, so if it is just a few, they can manually enter that data here as right. well. If they don't, you know, it might not be necessary for them to do the export and then import. Right. And you can also even further narrow it down by if you click on the blue advanced button again, uh, after you've uh, set it to all uh, on the buy cost field you can just set that to none and uh, or no buy cost and that's only going to show the uh, transactions that don't have a buy cost entered so it makes it even simpler once it views you can export that you can see where it's now just one page where before it was several pages and now yeah, I, and that would give you that good perspective like do I need to export it and put all of that in right. instead of like certain different things yeah, it may only be a few so, transactions, so you just do it manually. And of course, they're not able to do that right here. What right. they want to do is go into the order ID, so into the order detail page. Right. The order ID is a clickable link, and it opens up the details of the transaction, and uh, it's very easy to update the cost, the supplier, and the purchase date right from there. Now, if you have several, like on this page, there's several of those transactions, so you can you can export that like you did on the inventory page, and then add the costs in, and then import it back. Um, okay, so when we click the uh, import button, we've got this nice little message that pops up and says, only import by cost and other uh, sourcing data for deleted or archived MSKUs, which is basically um, just reiterating what we were just talking about. You know, right. Getting that kind of data plugged in into your inventory pages, um, that's going to automatically update your sales. So any sales that you had for an MSKU in the past or in the future, it's going to have that, that cost per unit amount accounted for. So instead of, you know, doing just redundant work when you don't need to, uh, yeah. plug that information into your inventory page, whether that be FBA or Merchant Fulfilled, and your sales are going to be updated for you. But this is just a little uh, nice reminder that pops up here. But we do have two options. We have uh, importing cost per MSKU or cost per order ID. So tell us a little bit about that, Jeff. And while you're doing that, I'm actually going to pull up uh, my exported um, spreadsheet that I have. Okay. Yeah, sure. So you do have the options uh, either by MSKU or order ID. So if you have a lot of orders, your orders have different MSKUs in each one. Um, 
you're going to want to use the update by order ID. However, if you find that you have a lot of transactions that are the same M SKU, maybe you're a private label seller that only has a few SKUs, and so um, you can set that to do the M SKU import. And what that does is you only have to update the M SKU cost on one uh, item, one M SKU, and it's going to fill in that cost for any order ID that has that M SKU in it. So it makes because it simpler. Each order ID is completely unique. Right. So you're only going to be able to do it one by one by one. Right. Um, to plug that in. But if you have multiple sales of a single M SKU, you can import a cost per unit for the M SKU and it'll apply to all of the sales of that M SKU. Right. right. Yep. Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay, so we covered the inventory evaluation report. That it, again, time sensitive. Get that stuff plugged in before December 31st, before that snapshot is taken. Uh, we covered buy cost. Get that information plugged in now. To update your profit and loss report, your supplier profitability reports, your racing profitability reports, all your profitability right. reports will be uh, updated, your sales data, everything. Um, but there are some other things that folks want to um, take a look at. Correct. Number one is probably going to be refunds. Mm -hmm. This is an area that folks really need to kind of pay attention to. Um, if you have not visited this page, it's under your accounting tab. If you've not visited this page, you're probably going to see that the disposition for all of your refunds is sellable. Um, you can either be sellable or uh, defective, and uh, the default disposition is actually sellable. So, Jeff, what do they need to do if they come to the refunds page and they have not made any changes here yet? All right, so you're going to find the disposition of your refunds in uh, Seller Central. So you have to go to uh, your Seller Central page, and then under Reports, uh, Fulfillment, and then it's uh, customer returns, and it'll you can create a report for a certain time frame, and, uh, and then you just kind of match it up and make sure you know, uh, you know, for example, this order ID, the very top one, you want to make sure that those were either you know the defective or were they sellable and returned back to your inventory, and you want to mark these uh, whichever way that uh, disposition is in Seller Central. And they're going to see that disposition in Seller Central. So right. really, we want folks to be checking that periodically throughout the year so that they can come back in and make any necessary changes. But really why it's important is because this is going to make sure that your COGS are accounted for accurately or your cost of goods sold. And it can kind of sort of be confusing, so I'll try to explain it. So for example, if I go to Seller Central and I find that this return um, was in fact not sellable but is defective, Come back to Inventory Lab, and I'm going to make that change. Before I do that, though, I want you to notice under the cost per unit credit column, my cost per unit has been credited back to me by Inventory Lab in my accounting. Why? Because the disposition is sellable means I'm going to sell it again. So the original accounting of my buy cost is credited back to me, and then it will be accounted for when the item ultimately sells a second time. If right. we were to account for the first time and the second time, that would throw off your accounting because you're accounting for your cost of goods sold twice. Of course, you don't want to do that. So if I come into Inventory Lab and I'm going to change the disposition from sellable to defective, I'm just clicking the toggle, I'm putting in the quantity, and that toggle turns red for me automatically, sellable is grayed out, and now we can see that my cost per unit has not been credited back to me because I'm not going to sell it again. So the item sold initially, my cost per unit was accounted for in the sale. I'm not going to be selling it again, so I'm I want to continue accounting for that in the original sale. Right. So checking that information periodically, coming back here to make any necessary changes, important because this really affects other stuff in their inventory lab account, right, Jeff? Right, yeah, it affects your, your cost of goods mainly, cost of goods sold mainly, but um, also if you're finding that most of your refunds are sellable or defective, one or the other, you can set this to default either way on your settings page too. So that'll help you as you go forward. But you know, the more you use this, you're gonna you're gonna kind of figure out which one it you know is more off or more common. Yeah, definitely. And I know you wanted to talk a little bit about um, getting their expenses plugged in. Again, this is also isn't time sensitive. You can you know do this as you get closer to tax time. Um, but other expenses, what do you want them to kind of take a look at there? Hey, you just want to make sure all of your uh, expenses are entered, including, you know, you might think that we automatically set up your uh, inventory lab subscription as, as an ongoing 
you know, sub expense for you. But since we can't uh, tell which subscription you have, uh, we leave that manual. So you'll make sure you enter that as a recurring transaction, whichever, you know, either the monthly or the yearly. Um, you know, you want to make sure you get your, if you don't do it on a per item basis, make sure your packing supplies are all entered. Um, another one uh, is mileage. You want to make sure you've got your mileage all entered for the year. Um, that has its own page, actually. But So when they go to the other expenses page, this is where all those expenses that are uh, assessed by Amazon, they all live here. So the disposal order fees, your Amazon pro or subscription fee, folks are going to see those here. Right. But this is want them to plug in everything else. I mean, really thinking back throughout the year, did you attend a conference? Did you purchase a course? Did you, your packing supplies? Everything that you can possibly think of because this is all going to go through to that profit and loss report. Right. So really want to get this stuff plugged in. Um, I clicked the add button uh, at the top that you saw right next to the advanced search button. And if I click in category, there's a lot of common categories here. Um, or I can make up a category. You can call it whatever you want plug in, in the date that you would like that to be uh, accounted for, the amount, a uh, little bit of a description, and then also if it's a recurring expense. Mm -hmm. So again, Inventory Lab does not automatically account for your Inventory Lab subscription cost um, because maybe you want to account for that somewhere else. We don't know, but we can't assume that you, you, know, that, uh, you want that to be automatically done for you. So you want to get that plugged in and you know, kind of make sure that that's accounted for uh, throughout 2018. That, you know, your B cool subscription, whatever the case may be, get all that information plugged in um, so that that is going to then be accounted for in your profit and law offices. Yeah. Um, and then you had also mentioned mileage. Right. Which is going to be right here. Yeah, and mileage is not, it's going to show up on your profit and loss as a, in the other section at the very bottom. It's not going to be part of your net profit because it isn't, that's not something you use for that. This is only for tax purposes. And so. It's it's going to keep track at the current mileage rate. We have that figured out automatically for you. So you basically put in your round trip miles, and we do all the calculations for you uh, for each date you enter. Okay, so we've covered a lot. One time sensitive <laughs> uh, topic, and then a couple of other ones that, that you just want to address before it comes time for tax time. And really, these are things that you could be doing throughout the year. Right. Um, we're looking at profit and loss report. If you've ever attended a, an inventory lab webinar or seen us uh, speak at a uh, conference, you'll know that, especially for myself, I'm very passionate about you knowing that number, your net profit. Knowing where you stand as a business is so important. It's, it is the difference between being an entrepreneur and, and, and owning that identity and, and not. You have to know those numbers, get the stuff plugged in. It's great to have it for taxes. But I want you to know your numbers in March, April, May, June, July, August. I want you to be able to, to um, have that sense uh, about how your business is doing. I know there's one more thing, Jeff, and it kind of pertains to this profit and loss. I know you want folks to wait to export this for tax purposes until what? Right. You want to make sure that your uh, sales transactions are in reconciled status. And you'll note if you've ever looked at that page that some are estimated and that's you know, prior to us receiving the report from or settlement report from Amazon. And then once we receive the report, usually within 24 to 48 hours, those will change to uh, reconciled. So you want to make sure that it's going to take a couple weeks, probably after the first of the year, but you want to make sure that all those transactions have the green reconciled uh, for the year before you um, start working on any of this. Yeah, there's something to change. You know, Hence the word estimated. Right. Um, but like what you were saying, so after somebody's statement period closes, and for most of us, that's every two weeks, mm -hmm. so it's after your payout, within 24 to 48 hours, everything will be uh, changed over from estimated to reconciled. So you're kind of saying, you know, don't export your information for 2018 until you're sure that all of your 2018 sales have been reconciled, correct? Right. And, you know, 99.9% .9 sure it's not going to be on December 31st or the first of the year. No. So you'll have to be patient a little and wait for Amazon to get that out to us. Great. Yeah, I really wouldn't worry about much um, before the end of the year except for costs. Get those in. Get them plugged in. Inventory evaluation, snapshot yeah. taken every day. You can't unring that bell. That's so right. Get those costs plugged in. It's, um, it just breaks my heart when we have somebody that says, I, I, I want to go pull up my inventory evaluation report for December 31st. 
and you know, I'm not seeing the correct information. And thankfully it doesn't uh, happen too, too often because folks are usually pretty aware because we, as you might've guessed, we mentioned it a lot. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, but you can choose any date here. Um, and you know, if you don't have them plugged in, the information is not going to be there. So we want you to make sure you get that done. Start now. Don't wait until this, the 31st, you know, that's New Year's Eve. You want to be right. with loved ones <laughs> and having a good time, not worrying about your cost per unit. So get that plugged in. Uh, everything else, just uh, start chipping away at that. Make sure everything's up to date. And Jeff, thank you so much for all the great information. Yeah, thanks, Kim. It was fun. Talk to you later. All right, take care. Bye.